International uh, Lupus Day or World Lupus Commemorative Day. On the 4th of May, the Governor of Ghana, through the Ministry of Health, signed on to the International Declaration and said that, well, we will, we will fight this together. This year, we're marking the, uh, uh, we're commemorating the day uh, with a the theme, Lupus Beyond Boundaries. I've been joined on the telephone lines there, Skype phone line by uh, Dr. DSP Faisal uh, Ayambila. He is all the way out there. Doc, good morning. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning, Johnny, and good morning to our cherished viewers. We're back at the celebration one more time. And yes. is there anything worth celebrating? Yes, I think there is a lot worth celebrating with regards to this um, condition that is rather common in society mm -hmm. in terms of the fact that now treatment is, um, is readily available for people that suffer the condition. But for our viewers, we all know that um, lupus is actually a condition where, you know, the immune system of the body is supposed to fight off infections, viruses, and all of that. But in this case, the immune system becomes hyperactive and it begins to fight the normal cells and organs of the body. So that's what happens in lupus. Interesting. Yeah. How do people get this condition? Are they born with it? Do they acquire it along life? What is it? <laughs> you know, culturally, this is one of the conditions that people would say is um, um, or is as a result of spiritual attacks because it's, it's one of those diseases you can't even tell the specific cause. All we know is that your immune system suddenly becomes hyperactive and begins to fight your heart, begins to fight your brain, and gives all sorts of symptoms. But what we know is, is um, nine times more common in women. And in, in, in about four out of 10 cases, it would be a black person involved. So mm. there seems to be a correlation between being black and okay. being a woman. So it's most common in that group. Um, usually between the ages of 15 to 45 years. Mm. But it's mostly genetic because okay. uh, we realize that it runs in families. Mm. And it could also be as a result of certain medications that we take. And in some cases, um, some long-standing viral infections can predispose someone to get the lupus attacks. Family all around the world have this condition. That's alarming, really. Uh, in yes. Ghana, what's our story? In Ghana... Uh, sadly, to, uh, I mean, it's sad to note that we don't have the full statistics of the burden with regards mm. to how many patients we have. The main problem with lupus is lupus really looks like it resembles almost any other illness you can find because okay. if it attacks the heart, maybe the doctors may think it's um, a heart problem. If it okay. attacks the brain, we may mm. think it's neurological. So we are unable to quantify the, the number of cases we have. But... Currently, we know that the trends are towards um, point towards a rise in the number of cases. Okay. And luckily, we are able to diagnose more lupus cases in most of the secondary and tertiary facilities in the hospital. Mm. And a good number of our patients have been put on medications. And so I would say there is a lot of hope and there is, it's worth celebrating. Let's talk about the impact lupus has on persons who are affected by it. Uh, first, the psychological bit, and then we can talk about the medical bit. Yes, psychologically, as you can see, Johnny, this is a, a long-term condition mm. in the sense that once you are diagnosed with it, chances are mm. you have it for life and you are always going to be sick and have all these symptoms from time to time, regardless of how good the medication would be. And so it takes a psychological tool on yourself and people around you must also be sensitized to know that you have this condition you are battling with. Okay. Medically, mm -hmm. yeah, medically, there was a time where people diagnosed with lupus would not be given more than five years from the point of diagnosis. But mm. currently, because of the advent of um, good medications, we are mm. able to sustain life to well over 20 to 25 years on average. Mm. And so it's much better now than before. The, the, there's a call, just like uh, we'll have for dialysis, to have lupus on our national health insurance scheme so that yes. persons who are suffering from that or have that condition will have to benefit from the scheme. Is that an opinion you want to agree with? I personally would agree with this. Um, you know, um, um, in, 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 Mexic in medical jargon, we would say that lupus is the disease of a thousand faces because, mm. as I've mentioned earlier, the symptoms vary from any point from head to toe. You could have symptomatology. Right. 
And so I would say that considering the gravity of the condition, people who suffer this rare genetic condition should mm. be able to, you know, get some of the funding from the NHIS to purchase medications, which are also very expensive. Right. So it's, it's a right call. It's a call in a good direction. As a nation, uh, you said earlier that we have not paid enough attention to it in terms of even gathering data to, to help us in fighting that. What do you advise moving forward? Moving forward, I think the, the main, the main um, way to look at it is a two- or three-pronged approach. First of all, we should improve diagnosis. I mean, our laboratories should be equipped to be able to pick up lupus primarily in the blood. Secondly, we should have more awareness and sensitization like um, this good program has made available this morning. We should be able to tell people mm. about this rare genetic condition. Right. And thirdly, we should know that it's not contagious. And mm. so if someone has lupus, it doesn't mean you can't get married to the person or you shouldn't get close to the person. It's not one of those diseases that would move from one person to another. Mm. And so I think these are the three main ways we could look at it. And um, mm. holistically, we could be able to tackle the problem. Doc, I thank you very much for your time this morning. Uh, you've been very, very resourceful. Thank you very much, and thanks for having me once again. Right. And Do that's DSP Dr. Faisal Ayambila. He is all the way in the United Kingdom. He's been sharing some medical thoughts as well uh, with us about lupus. Today is World Lupus Day. We're commemorating the day, but the story is not as exciting as one would expect it to be. So... You know, if somebody has lupus, that's not the end of the world for that person.